This week, let's talk lasers. Next. Hey guys, welcome to the corner. It's me, Jeff, again. And this week, as you saw from the intro, we're going to talk a little bit about um, laser engravers for your 3D printers, okay? So a lot of printers out there nowadays have the option of adding a laser engraver to them. So I thought I'd be fun if I were to pick one up and I've been playing around with one for a couple of weeks and I thought I would um, sort of kind of tell you um, what my impressions were of it, okay? So um, in general, a um, couple words of advice, warnings, Make sure you're wearing your eye protection at all times. Lasers are dangerous. They can screw your eyes up. Okay, don't look at the beams, right? Without eye protection. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area because you are cutting into stuff. You are creating a lot of heat. You'll have a lot of smoke. Okay, and depending what you're cutting into, you're going to have some toxic fumes. Anyways, I guess everything that you burn will have a toxic fume. So yeah, make sure you're well ventilated. Okay, make sure you are monitoring what you are laser engraving. I would not suggest leaving a laser engraver alone for a long period of time. Okay, um, I usually have a camera set up to kind of look at mine when I'm not actually down here. Um, cause anything can be super quick to a, a minute or two to like a, uh, a three or four hour engrave. Okay. So if not more, so make sure you're being safe. Okay. And with those pre warnings said, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a show and tell. I had a, a snafu with it. Uh, I kind of screwed up a little bit when I first got it. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And then I'll kind of explain to you how I hooked it up and we'll show the software involved and then I'll kind of show you a couple of things that I've engraved, right? So here we go. So the laser itself um, and all the accessories come in a Creality box. So I assume Sani Smart and uh, Creality are the same company now or have always been. Um, but basically when you open it up, you get some, um, here, let me just move this aside real quick. You get four little wooden planks like this to start your journey um a small set of instructions now you got a pair of safety goggles these are very important good ventilation as well as what you're going to need and you actually get the laser module itself so this is the laser module that they um sell you i believe it's a 1.3 megawatt um laser it um, can uh, cut into wood, plastic, leather, um, vinyl, stuff like that. So it's, but it's not going to cut wood. It's going to engrave. Let me rephrase that, right? So I'm going to tell you a little story here. Um, so I followed what their setups were, which is basically, let's see here, hook it up to the board and turn it on. Now, I have it actually on the Tronxy itself. And the reason why I have it on the Tronxy itself is because you got that small little breakout board at the side. So I thought it would be super easy to hook up. However, here are the instructions. Now you see what we're missing here is this adapter board. Now in the middle of this adapter board right here, that is basically a step down converter to convert to make sure the laser is, um, it's 12 uh, volts. And it's, um, most printers are 24 now, so it just steps down the current to make sure you're getting 24. But my problem was that I plugged it in and I forgot that Creality printers and Tronxy printers are actually wired backwards. So I uh, had magic smoke come out of this little adapter board. So what I had to do was... I basically uh, put a buck converter in myself and I'll show you the wiring for this. I used actually um, Michael from Teaching Tech. He did a video of lasers about a year or so ago um, where he showed you uh, when you're using a buck converter how to wire it um, properly so um, it um, maximizes 
Um, the output due to the fact that um, the capacitors in there will slow it down a little bit, but yeah. So you can still use it properly. Just make sure, check your polarities, make sure you're using the right polarity. That was my mistake. I made a mistake on that, but all said and done, um, I wired in the, um, the buck converter directly to the power supply. So what I did was I took the uh, negative lead here. Unfortunately, yes, I know I know I have a red uh, heat shrink on here um, off of the uh, part cooling fan and the positive lead is let me just get this out here. Our, apparently got stuck behind the stepper. There we go. To the end of the 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 cable and basically you just plug it in right and then that's it and then you should have your laser working. So I went to Google Amazon and I bought this Sandy Smart 3D printer laser engraver which is a 1.6 watt. Um, if you scroll down it will give me two links and resources one for the software and profile and one for the installation guide. Now the installation guide is basically just a quick little video explaining to you simply how to um, install it, what the components do, uh, your focal point and stuff. So your focal point has to be 100 mils above and then you basically you adjust your focus knob and get it to where you want it to be. Now the software that comes with it um, is a laser grave software. Now this one here was all in Chinese instructions. Um, or not even instructions, all the icons and stuff. Um, so I didn't even bother with it, to be honest with you. Creality Workshop and G-Code Generator. So um, what I ended up doing was, um, in Creality Workshop, I did this Star Wars logo, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. But I didn't like this because it didn't look to me like it had a lot of options for settings and stuff. So I went on and I used the um, the Gco generator here for some different images. I'm starting to get the hang of this one now. I like this a lot, but the only thing that you have to be aware of is I tried to change the uh, the G-code settings. It comes with a header and a footer. Um, I tried to rewrite the header, but it wouldn't it wouldn't generate G-code when I did that. It kept crashing. So I, what I had to end up doing was I basically just went into the downloads and I. And I just erased the header altogether and then just resaved it. And that seemed to work for me. As long as your X and your Y were at zero point and your Z was at 100, it would just start automatically. So so I did that and that worked for me. This is actually another, I'm going to attempt to do this. I'll post this up on my Instagram when this is done because I'm doing this while I'm editing this video. Um, so yeah, so that really worked out good. So once I played around with that and I got comfortable with that, I decided to download Inkscape. Um, Inkscape is a free program, um, but you, um, I found from researching that you needed a couple plugins. One of them was this Inkscape Laser plugin by JTEC, and the other one I found helpful was this AxiDraw software installation, which allows you to do some cross-hatching. I did test it out on cardboard. It worked rather well. I have one of these plastic Prusa trays. I don't know if you can see that there. It did cut into a groove right there. It is just an outline, but you can see that pretty clear, right? So um, I tried a false skin for a book. As you can see, it um, lays it quite well. Um, oh, and then I, um, I decided to try it on a little bit of a PLA phone case. And again, as you can see, it is um, just outlined quite well. So that led me to think about how I was going to um, engrave in plastic. So what I did was I basically, I just, um, I printed a couple of um, PLA discs, or this is wood PLA actually, because I figured why not wood. I might have a better shot at it. And then I slowly started to... Um, kind of play around with um, engraving. And as you can see, uh, I got some burns in there and stuff like that, which is fine because that's learning, right? So with the lasering, what it is, is it's kind of the, um, the strength of the laser versus the speed 
of the laser. Um, and you, these are your, your factors that you kind of have to play with in order to get some decent stuff. Example, like if you look at that, I was trying to do my logo with all infill. And yeah, that's pretty charred, right? So that didn't work. But well, it was a good test, right? So I did that. And then I was like, well, hey, my wife, I, you know, she likes um, her stuff. So I kind of just played around and tried to get, um, you know, engraving her, her name and just um, playing around with the plastics. But um, using Inkscape, I noticed it just did the outline. So I looked for a, um, an add-on and I found one for um, uh, cross-hatching. So I figured I would give that a whirl and I came up with something like this. Now, as you can see, it's still a little bit far apart and stuff like that, but it's a little, it's much more pronounced than just doing the, the typical engrave, right? And ultimately what I did was played around with it a little bit. It's not perfect yet, but you end up getting some decent quality, right? So ignore the black mark that was actually um, on the print itself. I had some uh, pet G on the bed, <laughs> so... But um, yeah, it comes out um, crisp and readable for sure, right? So um, I'm going to play around with this a little bit more. I've still got a little bit of burn on the corners and stuff. I got to sort of tweak up, but it gives you the general idea of kind of what you can do on plastics, right? So um, this was with Inkscape. So the first print I did was actually um, this Star Wars here. Okay, and I used whatever settings that was in there, and I think I was actually using it for plywood or something, and kind of came out like this, completely gross. So then what I did was I kind of looked at it again and tweaked some of the settings, and I got this. But I wasn't happy with the software. There was not a lot of um, stuff to um, change and stuff like that. It's basically you take a photo, and then you slide it left and right to figure out the depth of darkness. Um, but ongoingly... I um, gave up on that rather quickly, and I switched over to their G-Code generator. And what I did was, here, what I did was on the G-Code generator, I tried to figure out the typical settings. So I got that, which is actually the same as this. But if you look at this, I did this, and this was quite promising, but I thought it was a bit too dark. So I toned it down a little bit more. I uh, sped it up, the laser up a little bit, and I ended up um, getting Grogu, little baby Grogu. But so I was wondering, because I was looking at it, and it looks very pixelated sort of thing all the way along the line. And I was wondering if that had something to do with my speed or um, the darkness of the picture or whatever. And I think it came down to actually the resolution of the picture I was um, trying to import into the G-Code generator. And with that, I um, kind of got me thinking that this is good, but what happens if I bring in something high res? So I brought in a high res picture of uh, like a 4K picture and then scaled it down in paint so it would fit. And it ended up giving me this. Now, I think that is pretty well darn perfect, except for the fact that my board was too short and I chopped off his ears. But yeah, that's the quality that you're gonna, like, I'm extremely happy with that. And that's with the G-Code generator that came with the software. So like, I'm ecstatic with that. Like, I think that's a really, really good um, print and it looks really awesome, right? So um, yeah. Um, and so this I'm very happy with, the plastics I'm very happy with.